Okay, this is video number 34 for the composite uh, analysis with Kapios native, native FEA solver. It's a complement to the previous four videos, namely 30, 31, 32, and 33, where I talked about uh, modeling a, a, a honeycomb structure, very simple honeycomb structure in, in Katia, and uh, three different ways of doing it. However, the problem that we did there was uh, very simple in a sense that the orientation of the sandwich plate when we did the analysis of it was horizontal. So I want to talk a few words, uh, say a few words about what happens if this, uh, this, this thing that we buy and use it in a structure is not necessarily aligned uh, with the global coordinate system. Uh, but, I, but to do that, I will start with talking about uh, a little bit about uh, uh, wood, okay, a tree trunk. So uh, here's the situation. When you look at a tree trunk, the, definitely we are dealing with an orthotropic material. So we have three directions. One is along the fiber in the circumferential direction. The other one is radial, which is perpendicular to the fiber, and the third one is along the length or height of the of, of the tree trunk. Now, the X, Y, Z that we're going to be talking about here, and we provide our material data later on in the material library, is not the same X, Y, Z that you may have, for example, when you're doing the, the load and the restraints and things like that, okay? So, uh, for example, if we take that tree trunk, here's the global coordinate system, we take that that tree trunk and place it like that, notice that definitely the X, Y, Z that you have defined in the material properties is not the same as the global X, Y, Z. You've got to be careful. And it's the same thing with the, uh, with the honeycomb structure. A honeycomb structure has a, an X and Y, which are fairly, uh, fairly uh, 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 specific. They are along the they call the length longitudinal direction and the, uh, the uh, perpendicular to that, which is called the width direction. And there is a normal, which is uh, basically normal to the plate. So uh, X and Y are in plane direction and Z is normal. So when you buy a piece of a, a honeycomb like that, you may actually take the peel off or if there's no label on it and find out what is the direction L what is the direction perpendicular to it, which is W, and obviously that is going to be normal to the skin. So if you orient this thing in a structure, uh, the X, Y, Z, namely normal, longitudinal, and the width direction, W direction, L and W direction, are not aligned with what you've got here and you're going to be doing the analysis, okay? Now notice that when you do honeycombs, there's only three, uh, when you model a honeycomb structure, there are only three pieces of information that you have to give it. One is called normal direction, normal modulus, okay, which is EZ, EZ, and EZ is in this, in reference to this coordinate system, the honeycomb coordinate system, and there is shear, shear in the XZ plane and shear in the YZ plane. Oh, here is the, here is the, the wood again. This is taken from a handout. Notice that there is, uh, uh, everything that's specified here is in terms of tangential, longitudinal, and radial direction, okay? And for the honeycomb, this is what I was talking about, there is the normal direction, and there's the longitudinal direction, and the W direction. So this is uh, the data from some supplier, and the information is given to you in that fashion. Now, the problem that we're gonna be doing, uh, let me explain to you what the geometry is. We have this uh, triangular uh, 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 structure, honeycomb structure, and it is uh, fixed. Uh, it is fixed at these uh, uh, three edges. These three edges, and it's loaded uh, with a pressure. Okay. Now, uh, this is uh, this can this problem. The the, the, the the orange piece is the sand. The honeycomb core, and the the purple one, the top and the bottom, are the skins. Now, we discussed something like that in videos uh, 31, 32, and 33, except that the structure was uh, horizontal. This was lying, lying down in the X, uh, X, y, uh, you know, X, Y plane. Uh, uh, so, uh, and, and, and there are two ways, uh, three ways of doing it. Uh, the way I'm gonna do it in this video is through an assembly. 
Okay, so I'm going to uh, create uh, 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 three parts, three parts, uh, the, the core, uh, which is going to be made of honeycomb, the skin, top skin and the bottom skin. The top and the bottom skin are going to be meshed with shell elements, and the core is going to be done with solid elements. Okay, uh, so uh, here, this is what I said. If you look at this uh, zoom, zoomed in section, uh, this is what you're going to see. Okay, now. When you define the material properties for the cone, uh, for, for, the, for the honeycomb, uh, it's not going to ask you about X, Y, Z. It's going to say, okay, give me E, X, give me E, Y, E, Z, G, X, Y, et cetera, et cetera. It's later on when you associate properties with this, uh, with this material, with this, uh, this, uh, you know, this material that is going to say, okay, where is your coordinate system? In other words, you tell me what the W direction is, what is the L, and of course, normal is going to be perpendicular to it. Okay. Now, uh, the the material are going to be taken taken the same as uh, what I did in videos uh, 30, uh, 32, 31 through 33, and these are taken out of the textbook by Barbero. So. Uh, uh, let me remind you, this was the honeycomb. There's only three pieces of information that you need. And as for uh, the, the this composite tab, I don't even need it because I'm not going to be using I'm not going to be using this tab at all. I'm going to be using these three properties, and the the, the, the thickness of the the core is done when I create the solid model. Okay, uh, and this is for the top skin and the bottom skin. Okay, it's it's done as the orthotropic uh, material, 2D material. So uh, the standard uh, five numbers or, or six numbers that we want. And I have a set of instructions here, and I'm going to keep it on the screen for just a few seconds so that you can print it if you want. And it will guide you through the process that we're going to be doing because it is it is rather uh, it is rather lengthy. Okay, and don't forget this thing before you're not, you run it, you always print. Okay, so the first thing I want to do is to go and input my material data. Uh, so uh, I'm talking about uh, these, uh, this information. Uh, okay, uh, this is a repetition for the past uh, uh, 30 videos, basically. But in case you jump in and watch this video, instead of watching everything from the beginning, uh, I'll do it. It takes only four or five minutes. Okay, so uh, and if you know it already, just fast forward to the place that you want. So start uh, infrastructure material. Uh, this is going to be my honeycomb. Double click on it, okay? And under uh, under name, put honeycomb here. Honeycomb, okay? And I'm not going to even go to the composite tab because I don't need it. I'm going to go to the analysis tab and choose the uh, honeycomb material and those those three numbers that I was uh, referring to. Now let me see those numbers where uh, the normal modulus and for this it is a uh, six eight six eight nine four six eight nine four seven six mpa for the two shear moduli this one is 209.6 i have to admit that i don't know where uh, barbara got got uh, his data from but uh, uh well i'm assuming that uh, these are realistic numbers uh, 72.7 you always have to go to your data sheet to find out exactly what is it that you need to do uh, we don't need a density here so uh, uh, because we're doing a static problem we're not talking about the strength and failure of the comb uh, the honeycomb therefore uh, don't worry about these things and apply notice that the name changes and changed and these numbers are going to be there it's, it's always helpful to check it make sure that nothing changed on you no looks okay now we're going to create another material here, and this is going to be the skin. We move this thing down there, double click on it, and uh, uh, under uh, feature properties, just put down skin. These can be carbon epoxy, etc. Okay, and uh, whatever the material is, composite. And here we're going to say this is unidirectional, although the actual choice of these number, these radio buttons don't matter. The only thing that you have to do is to put the correct on cured thickness, which is 0 0.7112 millimeter. Okay. Okay. And then uh, now, now notice that because it's, uh, my, my Katia default, uh, default value is three decimals, three decimal points. So 
it took the, the number is going to be taken as 0 0.7112 but it's displays as this okay so under analysis we're going to go to 2d orthotropic and then the numbers uh, so we go to the, the screen that i had and you can type those numbers six eight nine four seven six eight nine four seven which incidentally is 10 times smaller than the number that you put in for the normal uh, uh, modulus of the honeycomb this one is even weaker uh, 27579 27579 what we expect because this is the longitudinal uh, stiffness this is the transverse which is dominated by the matrix matrix 0 0.3 is the modulus uh, Poisson ratio and these three are are assumed to be the same one two nine two eight one two nine two eight same thing for the other guys one two nine two eight again once again if you're doing a real project you have to look at the data sheet to see what numbers you have or you do the testing either way and uh apply okay so you can double check right there composite right there okay and then we're going to save it so i'm going to use the floppy here save as uh, i have a folder desktop i have a folder which i called march 1st right there so i'll call it uh, tree trunk I should have called it honeycomb, but because the first transparency, the tree trunk on it, uh, this is what I'm going to, this is what I'm going to call it, so that I can remember. Now, exit. We're done with this. Now we start with the uh, with the product file because we're not solving this problem as a product assembly of three parts. So product is right here, and immediately I'm going to save this thing in the same folder. So file, save management, save as. That same folder where I put my material, uh, not not this one actually. Uh, it's right there, tree trunk, March first, tree trunk, right there. All right, good. So I'm going to insert my first part. Now let me also remind you what am I doing here. So I'm following these instructions. So create the material properties, and I did it. And now I'm going to insert the core. Okay, so you follow these steps in case you uh, want something written. So insert, insert a new part in there, and I'm going to call this thing the core. Right-click properties. So the uh, the part name is the core. Okay, the instance name is the core because when you do assemblies, there is a part name and there is an instance name. Okay, there we are. Now to make the part. Uh, my habit, because these are simple, simple problems, uh, I don't create the parts separately and then bring it in. I do it on the fly as I'm doing, as I'm, as I'm in the assembly design workbench here. So if you want to go to the part design and create it, you double click on this, this core. Okay. Notice that you you are taken either into wireframe and surface design, uh, no, uh, generative shape design, or you go, you you can go to the part design, whichever you want. I'll go to the part design. Okay. Because I want to create a solid object, so I create the three three points. Uh, so uh, these are the three points: uh, uh, two hundred. This is one point. To another one. This time, this is two hundred. And another one, where the Z is two hundred. Z is two hundred. Okay, so basically these are the, these are the three points. Now I'm going to let me see now what did I say here? Uh, uh, create the plane passing through the three points. The, these are not necessary. This is not necessarily the fastest, the easiest, or the most efficient way of doing it. You do you do the way you like it. But uh, here is my my suggestions. Uh, three points. So plane through three points through this point, and that point, and that point. Notice the plane was created here. Now, on that plane, I will sketch. Uh, on this sketch, I will uh, sketch my triangle. So, what I'm talking about here, uh, 
create the three points, draw the sketch, and then add it. Okay, so uh, uh, you don't have to be very careful here, so it can be very kind of sloppy there. But then you can make sure that these points are coincident with those points. Okay, so uh, this point, control that point. Uh, and, and you can make a, a constraint a definition dialog box coincident and you repeat this this point oops this point control that point coincident incidentally uh, let me let me with this third one let me do it differently this point control that point now if you right click Oh, I was going to say sometimes, uh, not in this case, it doesn't work, but sometimes you right click allows you to make coincidence, but because these are not on the same sketch, it won't let you do that. So I just do the same thing, coincidence. Notice that it all turned green. That's because once you do this thing, uh, this fully, uh, uh, fully constrained. Okay, now, what is the next step? Uh, you, uh, we created a sketch and then you, you pad it. Okay, so uh, here's the pad mirror extent and the thickness being half of the thickness of the core which is 9.525 so it means 9.525 in each direction multiplied by 2 you get your 19.05 the the pad uh, the pad or the core thickness there we are okay very good so uh, what is the next step uh, let me see now uh, Oh, uh, we create an ac uh, access system because remember this is going to be our honeycomb uh, honeycomb uh, uh, structure, and we need an, a, a coordinate system to, to properly define it later on. So here's an access system. Okay, uh, its origin. You know what? I'm going to put its origin. I'm going to put it at. at uh, how about this top corner? Okay, this top corner. Okay, except that the direction of Z. Of the honeycomb I want it to be perpendicular to that so you put the cursor in the in the Z line here and it says okay go pick your go pick your direction that you want Z to be aligned with obviously this edge is going to do it I select this edge notice that it did put the Z in this direction except that I want it to point up so that it, I can see it better so I'm going to say reverse it so there's a Z direction now the X and Y I'm not going to fool around here as I said, the X and Y are important because your honeycomb structure has a longitudinal and a, uh, a, a, an L direction and a W direction, and that must be consistent with your structure. So if necessary, you peel off the, the skin and find out what is your L direction, what is your W direction. But here, I'm just going to leave it the way it is. And let me uncheck this current here because I don't want this corner system to be the current coordinate system. Okay, very good. So uh, now I'm going to save this because we are pretty much done with uh, with this, these steps. Now we're going to do the top skin. Okay, so my preferred way of saving these things, I always go to the product. I always go to the product top level on the very top. And I click on the floppy because I already saved the assembly in there, in that folder. Uh, it's going to do this uh, automatically. So I don't have to go five sale management. I go to the top level and then click on the floppy. Okay, good. So what's the next step? So we're going to go in insert, insert our top skin right there. You follow these instructions. So uh, insert, insert a new part in there. Always say no. And I'm going to call this thing right click properties, a top skin. And top skin. Now, Notice that I am creating these objects the way I want them to be positioned in space. In real life, when you have an assembly, it's not that easy to do it like this. You create a part, you bring them in, and then you use assembly constraints. I am not using assembly constraints. I'm making them exactly where they should be. Okay, so now I go to the top skin because I want to make it. Right there, double click on it. Okay, double click on it. And notice that what it says is that I have to extract, I want to extract the top face of the, the, the solid. Now make sure, first of all, you are in the top skin and you're there, and you want to extract this face, but 
if you're talking about a face or a surface, you cannot be you cannot do it in the in the part design. You've got to go to the, for example, generative shape design and look for the extract. There is the extract. See the place where the join is, the third icon below it. There's a whole whack of things. Okay, so uh, I'm going to extract, extract. extract that face and we say okay notice that the extract is going to appear as belonging to top skin one thing that i forgot to do i'm going to fix this thing right now okay uh, after you extract extract uh, extract forgot i say i forgot <laughs> forgot Uh, get the boundary get the boundary I forgot about this because uh, this is going to be very really useful when we create try to create our plies later on get the boundary okay you know, I forgot this okay so save it I don't have to do the same thing for the top the bottom skin okay so let's go back here all right what do I mean by take get the boundary you see this right where you actually extracted that particular toolbar, the very first one says boundary. You select it and you select that surface, it extracts this boundary. Because later on, I want to create a ply with this boundary. Okay, this makes it easier. All right, it's a good idea to give these meaningful names. So we say, uh, uh, for example, right click properties, top, skin. I'll, I'll just say top. Okay, how about that? Top. and top okay good now we also we also want to uh, where are we here uh, we also want to uh, Oh, uh, what I suggested is that you join this extract, okay? You join it. So that being the case, you know what I'm going to do? Uh, I'm going to go back here, okay? And I'm going to delete this, delete this. I'm going to join, what I suggested is to join this. Uh, the, there's the top. I'm going to join it. And rename this thing. Properties, uh, top. Okay, uh, make sure that the direction of the joint is inward. We have talked about these things. This step may be redundant for some of you who may have watched the other videos and done a lot of problems, but, uh, and now we are going to extract the boundary of that joint. Okay, and I'm going to call this thing the top. Properties. All this joint does is that it gives you a control over the direction of the normal to the shell elements it's always opposite to the direction of joint okay so uh, we are done here let me see what else do we need to do we uh, we create an access system okay we create an access system we just joined it here uh, the boundary uh, remember the top skin i forgot the boundary uh, th and this goes uh, uh, this this goes after uh, this goes after the join obviously because of the way i did it uh, cut so that was done after the join okay paste very good uh, we create an access system so let's go here so uh, access system because we need a rosette later, later on we need a rosette now default is it puts it here but i want to put it at a different place so that i can see it for the top one i'm going to put the origin there this is not a big deal you know uh, uh now uh, and uh, for the again for the Z axis for the Z axis I select this edge and I'm going to reverse it so that I can see it better. Remember when you when you do when you do laminar composites there is a direction X there and that direction X is important because it tells tells you that when you put a you do a layup uh, uh, what is the angle with respect to that X so that X is extremely important. So you have to know when you take this fabric and you, you, you do the direction apply and you put it up there, uh, 
what is your x okay because your zero degree is going to be with respect to that x but in, in, in this problem, we're going to ignore. So you look at your unidirectional tape or your fabric to see how, to see how, uh, how it's oriented, and this X and Y must be along that. And uh, I'll check down current, the current. And when you do that, what I'm going to do is I'm going to name these. This one I'm going to say uh, uh, properties. Uh, I'm going to say for top skin. I should have done the same thing for the, the one corner system that I created for the core, and I'm going to do that, okay? All right, uh, are we done here? Uh, well, uh, we're going to do our, uh, our our laminates here, or not laminate, but the, the plies here. Okay, so that's uh, the next step, C and D. Okay. All right, so uh, let's go back, save everything. Uh, oh, 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 oh! You know what? My suggestion was we go to the product level, click on the floppy. It saves everything. Okay, and before I get there, let me actually also go and change the name of this coordinate system that I did here, right here. So I go to that core, I go to the core, I change the name, properties, and I change it to the core. This is for the honeycomb or the honeycomb. Oh, cool. I'll say the core. Okay, so now we're going to go back to our top skin. So we are in the top skin, you can see that we're in the top skin. And we go to the composite design right there. First thing that we do is uh, composite parameters. You click on it, add the material. Remember, I created a library with two things in it. It was called uh, March, uh, it was called Tree Trunk Library, right? So, desktop, uh, where was uh, March 1? Tree, tree Trunk. And there is a skin and there's a honeycomb. I don't need the honeycomb. Honeycomb is used for the core. I'm doing the top skin and the bottom skin later. So I just say skin. And this is the stuff that I put in there. And for, as for the rosette, add the rosette. And remember, I just created a rosette here. Top skin, right, right there, or from the tree. I'm going to hide this. And we say, OK. So it did create, we are in the top skin right here. You can see that it did create the composite parameters for me. Okay. Now, uh, then I'm going to do the ply group, ply group. See that ply group? Click on it. It asks you a couple of things. It says, what is the surface? Well, the surface, I'm going to use the top surface. I'd rather do it from the tree. The draping direction, I want it upward. I'm going to build this thing uh, upward. Okay. And we say, okay. And I'm going to call this thing right click properties top I'll say top one how about that top place group okay good and now we're going to create our plies right there ply there's only a single ply there it says where does it go to it goes to the top ply group and what is the boundary remember I extracted the boundary right here top boundary it knows that this is the boundary of the ply, and the material picked up correctly because I created that, and the angle is zero. All right, so that's it. Is there anything we have to do here? Uh, no. And then the next step is do exactly the same thing for uh, for uh, bottom skin. Now remember, I did forget here. Uh, let's go back here. I forgot. Uh, Oh here, right there. Join the join the extract surface, and uh, yeah, forgot to do the to get the boundary. Copy. Let's go there, and that is right there. Paste. I forgot to do the step. Okay. All right, so let's go back here. Uh, we go to the product. We save everything. Now we're gonna insert, insert a new part in there. Say no. And change the name of this thing to bottom skin. What do I call this thing here? This one I call top skin. This one I'm gonna call bottom skin properties. 
uh, bottom skin and bottom skin identical steps okay okay then we're going to go to the bottom skin and trying to make it bottom skin very good uh, let's go to the uh, gen uh, gen uh, generative shape design because you want to extract this bottom face okay extract the bottom face so in order to do that obviously you have to be in generative uh, shape design not in part design so uh, where is the extract extract is right there this is the surface that you want to extract you say okay but not, notice that these are happening so this is going to be bottom bottom and then i join remember i join i join this extract make sure that the direction is inward okay okay and extract the boundary right in the same uh, let me move this thing here uh, right there extract the boundary of the joint okay let's make these give these things meaningful name uh, right click properties bottom bottom properties bottom Properties bottom. And properties bottom. These things take time, but it makes the debugging a lot easier later on if you ever run into the problem. The next thing is to create that uh, uh, rosette. Remember, let's put this thing in the isometric view so that we can see it. Uh, remember this one was for the uh, this one was for the core this one for was for the top skin and I'm going to do another rosette for the bottom skin down here okay so uh, rosette uh, was the coordinate system right there access system uh, the origin <clears throat> I'm going to put it right up there you know I can also use this coordinate system in all likelihood but I will create another one and for the direction Z this axis and flip the arrow reverse it so that I can see it easier and uncheck the current as I said these two I'm assuming they have the same rosette I can assume that they have the same rosette and I can create it somewhere somewhere else and use it but I decided to do it separately and this is the access system right click properties and what did I call this thing uh, I called it I think bot, uh, I don't know, bottom rosette Can't remember was that okay all right very good uh that was the next step next step is uh, uh create applies just like i did it for the other fellow okay i just create the applies okay so uh, go to the uh, composite design your material properties add a corn uh, add material go to that folder uh, march first this was the material uh, skin add a rosette and the rosette is the one that i just created creates it there right click hide it say okay and uh, create the group so uh, group okay so uh, the uh, where is this uh, the bottom see that the bottom joint draping direction this is the bottom joint right flip it so that I build up my plies this way outward you say okay and I'm going to change the name of that thing to be the same as what I did up here uh, bottom plies group one properties i just add a bottom in the front of this okay good and now uh, apply the only ply that you have in there you select it as for the boundary as for the boundary select that, that extracted bottom boundary right there you see that 
and uh, same same material and zero zero direction we say okay and uh, we are pretty much done here so let's go back to the product we save everything okay what is the next step so now it comes the issue of the meshing okay now we do the meshing 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 uh, process we did all of these okay so uh, let's go here uh, we go to the advanced machine tool okay so let's see what it says uh, top skin surface use a surface measure to create a parabolic quad element 20 millimeter okay so what does that mean I'm, I'm, I'm doing a very coarse mesh here I have to admit the issue is not accuracy here because uh, you, I want to show you how to do it in case you have real data real geometry then at least you won't get bogged down so here is the uh, surface measure select the join I prefer to do these things from the tree because uh, sometimes you pick things you see that for example if I select this you see this if I select this it looks like I'm doing something to the core so I'd rather do it from the the tree uh, where the part body here is the, uh, the, the where's the joint join okay see if I do this thing I'm gonna run into problem you know like you so top uh, 10 millimeters is that what I said uh, 20 millimeter okay let's do 20 millimeters we'll see how it looks like if it's too too big uh, we come back and clean this up I don't, I don't like 20 but parabolic don't do any of the other options we say okay and let's mesh it right right there and we say okay uh exit uh now if you want to see the mesh let's see now can we see the mesh here right click uh uh let me oh, oh, oh cancel uh, cancel 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 uh, let me hide let me hide my part see whether i can see the mesh in here uh where's the part here this was top uh top skin right I did well it's kind of hard to see it there but uh, okay so if you want to see it no problem you know what you should do you should go to uh, you should go to the uh, uh, generative uh, generative generative structure analysis say right click mesh visualization and change the rendering you can also see it there it looks like that and when you're done you deactivate this thing and go and do the rest of the problem what was the rest of the problem we just did we just did it for the top skin okay top skin and we repeat it for the bottom skin incidentally let me go back there and i'm going to call this thing properties i'll call it top top surface mesh how about that top okay very good all right so we go to the advanced machine tool once again and repeat this thing for the bottom surface so uh, surface measure select this but do it from the tree please so bottom skin there it is there's the bottom all the information is the same parabolic quad only and then zap it there's a mesh we say okay now the one thing you have to realize is that these nodes may not be exactly the same as down here okay this is why sweeping this you have to be careful if you're going to do sweeping if you do a sweeping to get the 3d elements for this core uh, you better make sure that uh, actually uh, let me take back what i said uh, because we're doing an assembly it really doesn't matter but if you are doing a single part that would be a different story but let's not worry about it right now okay so we did this thing and then we use the horrible uh, tetrahedral mesh for the uh, for the uh, solid okay so this these two were done okay and uh, exit and the horrible tetrahedral mesh can also be done right there or it can be done in the generative uh, uh, 
structure analysis. You can do it here too. So you select the uh, select that path, this object, okay? And uh, I said use parabolic size of 10, mil 10 millimeters. There we are. And you notice that the nodes of the the nodes of the shell elements and the uh, solid elements do not match. This is why I'm going to create a connection between the two faces and say this this connection is fastened or whatever it is. Okay. All right. So what did we do? We just did uh, this guy. Okay, we did this. All right. Now we're going to go and create the uh, or import the properties for for the top skin and the bottom skin. Okay, before I do this, uh, let me go ahead. Uh, we, we really have to go to the gener uh, generative structure analysis. And if you want to see your mesh, you can see it. Right click, mesh visualization, and there we are. Uh, a couple of things. I'm going to rename this thing properties. I'm going to rename this to be the bottom, bottom surface. Bottom. Okay. Okay, and this is of course is the core, no problem there. A couple of things you can do too, you can change the color of these if you want, graphics, properties, graphics. Uh, you can make this top one, for example, yellow. The bottom one, you can make it, uh, I don't know, uh, also, well, orange, how about that? And of course, uh, the solid ones, I'm gonna leave it the way it is. Okay, now, what do we have to do here? We did these. Now we're going to import the composite properties for the top skin and the bottom skin. Okay, so we go here, deactivate the mesh. All right, so uh, import composite properties right there. Okay, it says, what's the support? Well, let's go to the tree, and I suggest you go to the tree, and you select, go to the top skin, and select the top joint right right there and uh, the by the ply analysis by the ply click on the wrench go to the place in the tree where the top price group was defined you selected it right there you say okay and make sure this is not symmetrical because you're stacking it above that uh, core okay all right so this one that we just created is for properties i'm going to call it top skin how about that top skin just so that i know which is which is which and i repeat this thing for the bottom so uh, import uh, to the import composite properties go to the tree bottom 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 skin and click on the wrench and go to the proper place in the in the in the tree where it says bottom price group you say okay and uncheck this and we say okay all right and i'm going to call this thing properties bottom all right now notice that we did these two. Notice that we don't have 3D properties. We don't have three pro 3D properties for this octree tetrahedral mesh that I did. So we have to do it ourselves. But before you do that, oh, cancel that. Before you do that, you're gonna have to define a user material. Okay? So we go to the user material. There it is. Now I have to go to my library where I define the honeycomb stuff. So I go to the uh, I go to the library that I created uh, it was not video 34 it was called March 1st that folder was called March 1st this is the one that I created we say okay and here is where I use the honeycomb right there and we say okay so I did create a user material this is for the core I can change this thing properties to change the saying that the honeycomb how about that well I'll, I'll put down honeycomb here Uh, I'll call it the core. Core, 
You don't have to rename these things as long as, long as you know what you're doing. You don't have to do that. And now I go to 3D property right there. See that? 3D property. It says, what is the support? For the support, you have to take your mesh right, right there. Right there. Tetrahedral mesh right there. And what is the material? Well, you check the user defined material. And then from the tree, you go and select whatever you created right there. Now, it asks, because it's also top, because it's a honeycomb and there is a coordinate system associated with it, okay, uh, you go have, you're going to have to pick it because otherwise it will take the default global X, Y, Z, which is wrong. So you click on the wrench. It's a user one. Okay, it's a user one. And you go and pick it. So I did create a coordinate system here for the core, which was right. Uh, oh, this is this is this is upscale. Right there. This was the coordinate system. Remember, I put it way up there. That's why it's important to name these things so that you know what you have done. And uh, I mean, you can also display it locally, but that's not the issue here. And uh, this is it. Make sure. You select it. Otherwise, if you use the global coordinate system and you're going to get numbers and colors, so it's going to be wrong unless you're lucky so that the global coordinate system and the honeycomb coordinate system is the same. You say, OK. And now we have. We have uh, this. All right. So what's the next step? We, we did this. OK. Uh, we're going to create connection analysis connections. OK, so uh, let's go back here. Uh, we'll make sure we save these things, okay? Did I save the analysis? I'm not sure. Let me click on it. No, I didn't. Let me do that through the uh, uh, save management. There is my analysis. I never saved it. Save as. Uh, this is the right folder. Analysis, fine. And we say okay. All right. The next step is to create connection. Analysis, see that? Analysis supports general analysis connection. You click on it. Now this is where you have to be careful. For the first component, for the first component, select the, uh, select the join in the top skin. Okay, so join in the top skin, go to the top skin. There's a top skin. There's a join. There it is, right there. And for the second component, make sure you select the second component. Select the top of the uh, the top of the uh, the core right there and all there's a little yeah and say okay and then repeat it for the bottom one uh, this this one let me call it uh, see as, as you do these things it creates connections for you right there this is the one that I just created right click properties I'll say the top how about top and core Okay, and I do another one for the bottom and core. So another analysis connection. Go to the tree and select the join from the bottom, right, right there. And for the second component, very frequently people forget to go to the next line and they select something and it goes crazy. Uh, now, uh, this guy, this guy, I want to hide it. Okay, so this is this is. Uh, this is what I was uh, concerned. Uh, concerned. So let let's go back here. Okay. I want to select the bottom of this. Uh, the bottom of this uh, uh, core. Okay. So let's uh, let's do a few things here. Uh, first of all, the core is in hiding. Let's bring it bring it back. Okay, I want to hide this guy because it's, it's blocking me. And that could be the face that, that this bottom that I picked. So right click, hide. Ah, oh, there it is. Okay, you got to be careful because uh, you don't want to pick things that uh, you have to use both the, the, the screen and the tree. Okay, uh, anyway, so that's good. All right. So we did this, and then we declared these two as fasten. Uh, let me make sure that I change the name of this thing for debugging purposes, if ever you need it. So it's a bottom. 
bottom and core. You say okay. All right. And declare these as fastened. Now, what is that thing? You have to look under the face to face connection properties. So it's, it's here, right? You see that? Face to face connection properties, and you want fasten, fasten, fasten. You select the, 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 the top core and uh, core and uh, and the top top skin basically and puts a fastener there another one for the bottom one puts another one down below okay if these things are bothering you you can always hide them so for example i'm gonna can hide oops <laughs> hide it uh let me let me hide the whole thing oops Wait a minute. So something is. Uh, oh, uh, it's these uh, fast th these things these things that are blocking. So I'm gonna fasten. I'm gonna hide hide. Uh, maybe down here. Yeah. Okay. Hide and hide. Okay. What do I want to do now? I want to put a pressure there. Okay. So where is the pressure? Right there. See that pressure on that face. And this is the correct value. This is the one that I wanted to put in there. And then I have to clamp the three edges, three, these three faces actually, clamp this face, this face, and that face. And I want to clamp the edges, three edges on the top and three edges on the bottom of those uh, face uh, or skins, okay? You clamp. The problem is, uh, Oh, okay, so uh, in the event that it won't let you, and see the bottom one won't let me do that, okay? And there's a reason for that. There's a reason. See, this one is okay, this one is okay, and this one is okay. But when I try to do the bottom, it won't let me do that because there's some stuff sitting here so you can hide them. So put the cursor there, right-click, hide. Still not, still not let, letting me take it. Right click height. Ah, now I can pick it. You see that? So there and there and there. I put all these six in the same one. If you want, you can uh, uh, put it uh, in two different clamps. And let's make sure we save everything. We did this, and now run it, always pray. Because you do so many things in a, in a problem like this that something's bound to go wrong. Okay. Oops, we saved it. Okay, here's a run. All right, I can leave it on, leave it to you from this point on, but uh, I'll walk you through a few of these uh, post-processing things. First, let's look at the, 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 the deflection. Aha, there we are, okay? And change the scale. Oh, there, there it is, <laughs> okay. So uh, this looks ugly, okay? So let's look at the deflection. There we are, double click, average ISO, Okay, now uh, change the rendering. Just be patient for a second. Change the rendering material shading. There we are. So uh, roughly 0.78, uh, 0.7, mil 0.7 millimeter, the maximum deflection right there. Now there's a few things that we can do here. If you go there, if you go to the uh, to the uh, tra translations. Uh, there is, uh, if you want to see just the solid elements, you can select the uh, tetrahedron. It just shows the tetrahedron. Now, you're not going to gain anything here by doing the uh, the shells on the top and the bottom, uh, bottom and top, because these are fastened together. They move together, right? So I'm not going to gain anything here. Say close. All right, now let's look at the one Mesa stress. There's the one Mesa stress. Okay, so uh, double click on it. Let us look at the just the solid elements, just the solid elements. 
there we are okay if i use the finer mesh the stress in the core is going to be very small however because i use the horrible mesh and <laughs> so you know this stuff here there's a stuff here look look at it there's stuff here in this blue range and those are you know kind of small if you put the cursor on it you can see that so these are not these are these are small stresses for etc so all i'm saying is that bad mesh bad stress okay uh now if you want to see the stresses in the core if you try to do it here see that double click on it if you wanted to see the stress in the core you're not going to see anything the core me not not the core i'm sorry the top and the bottom surface right there nothing and this is for the top surface and if you want to see the bottom surface again nothing that's because the stresses in those things are not done through this uh, icon we have done this thing many many times so you put the cursor here right click generate image the stress uh one here uh, full tensor component okay and now you go there and you say okay double click on it okay double click on it and uh, uh select for example the uh b bottom or the top on it there this is the stress distribution in the top skin if you want to see the bottom one uh bottom one is going to be uh uh where's the bottom one there's the bottom one okay please do not rely on these numbers this was a horrible mesh and uh, i just wanted to show you the process and not not the actual number if you if you say the stress in the up tree where is this the, the solid okay you're almost zero we know that because that's the purpose of the core the purpose of the core is not to have big uh, stresses in there okay uh, big, you have big shear stresses but uh, not not uh, no. now if you look at the one misa stress there we are okay this is the one misa stress in the core and uh, same thing uh, uh, yeah so if you had many by the way if you have many plies in there you can go there ply by ply the way we have done other problems and look at it wow that took about an hour but uh, we got to the end okay good luck folks